We will be continuing our lesson on chapter 8. Chapter 8, as you may remember, uh, talks a lot about adjusting entries. And today, uh, after talking about adjusting entries for three uh, lessons, we, we will be concluding it, this chapter, with the uh, closing entries concepts. But prior to that, let's review adjusting entries once again. So there are five types of adjusting entries that we have learned in this course. And they are supplies, prepaid expenses, unearned revenues, late arriving purchase invoices, and amortization. So I'd like you to really understand and, and, and remember the journal entries that go along with all of these uh, adjusting entries. Uh, and, and most of them have original entries as well, as you know. But as far as the adjusting entries are concerned, for supplies, you debit supplies expense, you credit supplies, uh, and for prepaid expenses, you debit the actual expense, like the rent expense or the insurance expense, and you credit the prepaid asset, like prepaid insurance or prepaid rent. For unearned revenues, the adjusting entry is to debit unearned revenues and credit revenues. For late arriving purchase invoices, you're simply debiting the expense that you received uh, as far as the invoice is concerned, and you credit cash or AP, depending on when you're going to pay for it. The amortization entry is debit amortization expense and credit accumulated amortization for that asset. So you have to remember that uh, accumulated amortization always is very particular to that asset. And remember that it is a contra asset account, which means again, it means um, the, uh, uh, the ending balance is a credit balance for am accumulated amortization. However, it is still recorded as an asset in the asset side. So once we have finished with the adjusting entries, then we produce an adjusting adjusted trial balance. Uh, with all the software in, in, the, uh, in the world, we don't really actually produce the adjusted trial balance. We call it trial balance after adjustments. So the title doesn't change of the trial balance. It just means that now you have a trial balance with the adjusting entries included in them. And after all of this is done, we have to learn how to close accounts. So even we, uh, before we get into how to learn to, uh, to close accounts, we must understand why we are processing closing entries. There are two types of accounts, uh, other than, of course, the, the other types, uh, assets, liabilities, equities, and so on. These two types of accounts are, are meaning that these, the accounts can be put into two different types, one permanent, and the other temporary. So permanent accounts are balance sheet accounts. Permanent accounts are balance sheet accounts. They uh, do not disappear from year to year. Temporary accounts are income statement accounts, which means that they are revenues and expenses. And these accounts, uh, basically what we do the, to them is that we make them zero at the end of the year. So those balances have to be zero at the end of the year so we can start fresh for the next year. Now, question can be why do they have to go to zero? The answer is very simple. Remember, balance sheet is a snapshot, meaning it's like a still picture of that day for the business. Income statement is like a video. So from the beginning of that period to the end of that period. So as long as you have captured the data for that year in that particular income statement, you have done your job. And after that, you have to start fresh again for the next year. You cannot carry forward revenues and expenses of the previous year into the next year. Yeah, so that is why we have to ensure that the revenue and expense accounts, which are the income statement accounts, which are the temporary accounts, happen to be zero at the beginning of the new year. So in order for us to do that, we have to uh, really understand the nature of all these accounts. So revenues are those uh, types of accounts that, uh, as you know, that the company earns the money uh, in, in those accounts. Expenses are the, that the, uh, those types of accounts that the company is using to help it earn the revenue. So after you've done all the adjustments, after you produce the final set of financial statements, the balance sheet income statement, you will now learn uh, that you need to close these accounts in order for you to start fresh. So, how do you close those accounts? Well, it's very simple. You do the opposite of the balance that's in that account. So revenues, we know 
are all credit accounts. We know that you've been crediting revenue every time you do a transaction for revenue. So now it's time for you to close the account, which means that you would debit revenue. Okay? So that means that the revenue account, which was a credit account, is now being uh, closed by the debit side of it. So at the end of this transaction, revenue account would have a zero balance. And what do you credit with? You credit owner's capital. Okay? This is the account that you had expanded from. Remember in, in three, four chapters ago, we only did owner's capital for all the transactions. Then we expanded to revenue and expenses and drawings. And now you're turning back all of those things into uh, the owner's capital at the end of the year. So all of this becomes part of the owner's capital. You would also notice in the balance sheet templates that we've been using, including Mirza Book software, you will notice that the owner's equity account, uh, accounts or type equity types have several types of accounts, including the net income of that year. So when you close all of these, you're closing all of these accounts into the capital account. Credit, uh, owner's capital uh, as I mentioned. So then of course what you need to do is now close the expense accounts. The expense accounts uh, would have to be uh, the same. You would have to credit the expense accounts because you would like to close all those expense accounts which were debited earlier on. So as you close them, but you debit. You of course debit owner's capital because you want to make sure that those expenses go against the revenues within the owner's capital. So owner's capital is uh, debited and credit uh, is the expense account. Uh, and then of course now you have the drawings account. Remember drawings account acts very similar to an expense account. So you do the same entry, debit owner's capital and credit owner's drawings. Basically what you're doing is, as I mentioned, you are debiting and crediting the opposite accounts to make sure that all the temporary accounts are being closed. After you've done the closing entries, your uh, income statement should be completely zero, with zero revenues and zero expenses. Once that happens, you can now start fresh with the new year as far as your income statement or temporary accounts are concerned. So. This was the last stage of the closing entries. Once you have finished them, you have basically completed the accounting cycle for that year. Okay? This is where the accounting cycle ends for a small, tiny business. And once you understand this entire complete accounting cycle, uh, then basically what you're going to do is learn different things within the accounting cycle uh, as far as the future courses are concerned. And of course, as you progress through that, you will understand the different types of accounting for different types of businesses. So, in this chapter, just to recap, we have done a lot of, uh, um, a lot of adjusting entries and we have focused a lot on the different types of adjusting entries that, uh, that I've introduced you to and understand them and, and see how they impact your income statement and uh, they, how they impact your balance sheet. And then at the end, we have now learned how to uh, do uh, closing entries in order for you to be ready to start the new year for the business. So thank you for listening. And as always, ARTW, accounting rules the world. Thank you.